Do you love the look of a moto jacket but find the asymmetrical zipper a bit complicated? Well, I've got a pattern today to show you made out of a knit fabric. It's a simplified version of the more complicated moto jacket and I'm showing you all the sewing for the zipper, the collar and the facings. Sneak peek butterfly print. <laughs> Keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. Welcome back if you're always stopping by and if this is the first time you've watched the channel, you'll find a lot of sewing content here two to three times a week and with every single video there's lots of practical things that you can take away for your own sewing. Today's a special video, it's a collaboration with an amazing sewing vlogger, one of my friends. Her name is Kim and you know her channel as Dorothy's Daughter. I have collaborated with her before in the past with the Presto tunic from Love Notions and that was a lot of fun. In that collaboration we got to know each other and become great friends and we are always in constant communication. While we were chatting we both decided we love this jacket and we both decided to make it together so if we're making it why not share some content for you that might help you in a range of aspects. The pattern I'm talking about is a cheap moto jacket from Seamwork. I believe this was released maybe two months ago. Seamwork releases a few patterns every month. If you're not a member you can still purchase patterns individually and that's what I've done with this jacket. So this is an amazing jacket. When I saw the release I was like impressed. Now I've made a moto jacket before last year, the Kemp Town moto jacket from Pier and Palace. That jacket was meant for wovens, it had a thousand pattern pieces, I fully lined it. It was quite an intensive job, mainly to get the fit right. I still say that moto jacket was my wearable toile. I have to go back to that pattern and modify it and lengthen it basically, it's just too short. There are many moto jacket patterns available around there and I have a few of the woven ones, the very complicated ones with lots of pieces. I have the Ziggy moto jacket from Star Arc and McCall 7694. Now when you look at these you think oh you know that that's such a big project and I have been putting them off not because they're difficult not because I can't do them because just because of time basically so when you get a simplified pattern that has a similar look that still has that asymmetric zipper with that collar and all the same look but designed for neat fabrics you know why not start there for this year I will eventually get to the other ones the pattern mentions light to medium weight knits is appropriate but I beg to differ a little bit on that. I would not make this in a light weight knit. I would just not hold the structure. You're gonna have all sorts of problems with the zipper. I would not go that way. I would stay to the medium to heavyweight knits. Not much stretch required, only 15%. The fabric I chose to pair to this pattern is a Pontaroma. I measured it at 20% stretch, vertically barely any stretch. It's full of butterfly print on it. I love it. And I think it was a good pairing for this pattern. Seamwork patterns come in two different drafts, one from 0 to 16 and that is drafted with a C cup. That is the draft that I've chosen and the other draft goes from size 18 to 26 and that is drafted with a double D cup in mind. When you look at the size charts there's plenty of ease there. When I looked at body measurements my size would be a 14, I decided to go with a 12 and it's similar to what I've done with other seamwork patterns, just gone down a size and got the ease that I prefer which is a bit less ease. <laughs> And I believe that the second draft from 18 to 26 has less positive ease drafted into it. So I think you do need to look individually and check what size is best for you according to the ease that you like. They are all drafted for a woman that's 5 foot 8 and I find that surprising. That is my height but I always find these patterns so short. Like maybe that's the style that they want. Like they want the jacket to be super short. For me and my proportions I just find it extremely short. The length from the nape of the neck down to the hem is 20 and a half inches or 53 centimeters and that for me would be considered cropped and I don't want a crop jacket, it just doesn't suit me. Whenever I've made a crop jacket like the moto jacket I made last year, I'm always like touching and feeling like I've got missing fabric there. <laughs> Not that I want a long jacket but two extra inches makes all the difference for me. There is a lengthened and shortened line in all the pattern pieces and I just cut spread 
and added two inches there and that's it really. Kim on her video she's going to discuss sewing with faux leather or fake leather because that is the type of fabric that she chose. Her jacket is amazing. I wish I could find fabric like that for myself. It looks really really cool. It's just the coolest jacket. So that is what Kim is focusing on. Please head over to her channel once you've finished watching my video and check out her amazing cheap jacket. What I focused on is sewing. In Up Close and Sew Personal I'm showing all the sewing aspects of the zipper, the facings and the collar. You see the choices I've made and why and it's gonna be fun so let's hop into that. These are the pattern pieces. This is the center front that you cut four out of because one will become a facing. That's the front side. That's the back that's cut on the fold. The two collar pieces, one upper, one under collar and the back facing that will go there and the sleeve piece. The sleeve looks shorter because I'm gonna be adding a cuff here out of the contrast fabric I'm using for the collar. So this is a leather look jersey that I'm gonna be using on the upper collar and I'm gonna be using the same leather look jersey on the facings here for the jacket. I have already fused on the interfacing there. On the seams here where the zipper is gonna go, on one side on this seam and on the other side on that seam, I'm gonna be adding a little strip of fusible interfacing to stabilize these seams as well. These are all the front pattern pieces. So this is the right side of the body, that's the left side of the body. And each front piece is composed of two. So there's a side one and a center one. And on the right side of the body, the zipper goes on this center area there, right on the center front, right there on that seam. That's where this half of the zipper goes. And on the left side of the body, the other half of the zipper goes in that seam right there. So between these two. This zipper stop at the bottom has to meet a dot that is marked on the pattern there that I've marked on this side. So that's where that stops. So the fabric will hang a little bit raw there in order to be able to do the hem. And on this side, there's dots too in there to match the same distance for the hem for this other side. There are also dots at the top and my zipper is obviously too long. I will need to trim this and match the length required, but totally doable. This is the front center piece for the right side of the body and I have half of the zipper hand basted onto the edge. Now this is the right side of the zipper, there to the right side of the fabric as you can see. At the bottom, the zipper stop is matching the dot there. So this is left over for the hem at the bottom. And I'm just going to leave that hand basted at the edge right there just for now. And as you can see on the top, there is a dot right there. So that's where the uh, teeth should stop. And of course, I have a lot left. So I'm going to pull that down and trim the excess that I need and leave like this part of the zipper right there but without the teeth sort of up I have to remove about three eighths of an inch of, of zipper teeth right there with pliers that'll be fun I have here the right center front with half of the zipper already just basted on by hand I haven't sewn that I have trimmed the top of the zipper that was left over because my my zipper was too long and now this other half of the zipper here it needs to go within that seam over there and my thing about zippers is to not separate them and that's how I ensure I get the length matched up everywhere both on the bottom and on the top. I treat the zipper always as one piece so basically if I want this seam to be in there I just have to place the wrong side of the zipper to the right side of the center front piece from the left right there matching the dot that is going to be here on this side so i'm just going to pin it there for reference and then the lateral front from the left will come over right sides together to right side of the zipper and you can see that i've got the zipper sandwiched between these two seams these two seams have been stabilized with a thin strip of interfacing as you can see and i have already finished these seams i have searched them already so I don't have to worry about that later on. I've got dots here that are on the pattern that I need to match so that they're both the same. And you can see the zipper inside is hitting those dots the same 
as it would on the other side. So now I just have to put these two together. I'm going to hand baste them together with the zipper in the middle. If you can see the zipper there, it's been hand basted on. It's as it's supposed to be. This is the right side of the body. So I've got this seam here just pinned on. I haven't sewn that and I'm not interested in doing that. I want to finish the zipper first. And this is the side that I hand basted on first. So this side of the zipper was basted on to the right center of the jacket. On the wrong side of the jacket, you can sort of see it better. So this is the left front center that's just flapping around there. And on this seam there that goes up to the shoulder, that's where the zipper has been sandwiched in between. Always meeting these dots here at the bottom so that the hems are gonna match at the bottom. And on the top there, you can see the area where I trimmed the, the teeth off and left this raw area. What I do is tuck that away so that when I sew this zipper on, on the other side, that's how it's gonna look. So you have, you've got the teeth there and then that little piece of fabric from the zipper that's left over is sort of tucked in into there. And at the top, they're gonna match like that. So I'm gonna just go and put the zipper foot on my sewing machine. So I'll start from the very top and go to the very bottom. Then once that's done, I'll flip this and sew the other half of the zipper from the top. And here I won't be sewing to the bottom because the zipper stop is there and there's only one layer of fabric here on this side. So I'll stop where the zipper finishes. This is the left front of the body the area where the zipper is tucked between both the seams, that is the shoulder seam on the top and I'm just going to sew with a straight stitch. So I've got the zipper pull right there that I need to push to the top. Now this is the end, you can see through the fabric there, that's where the zipper stops and it matches the dot there for the hem. Okay, so you can see the seam there, some hand basting that can come off now. And you can see that this is one continuous seam from the top, these are the shoulders, all the way down to the bottom. When you open this seam, this is how the left side of the body is gonna look. So the zipper is tucked in between these two seams. This at the bottom is fine. This just needs to be hemmed as normal. My hand basting is falling off on the other side. I have to sew this one, so I'll just flip this and you can see what I have to sew next. So this is the right side of the body that I'm sewing onto the zipper from the top and this is the lapel area, not the shoulder, so this is the center front right side and then all the way down to there. So I'll stop sewing where the zipper stops. What I'm going to do here, and it's unconventional, is I'm going to sew this, but narrow, just like that, so within the seam allowance. And that's just to hold this in place. And I'm going to go ahead and do the definite stitch when I have the facing piece on here. So, so the zipper is secured on, but not permanently, at least not at the right seam allowance. I wouldn't want to sew this side of the zipper at the right seam allowance and then have to go and sew on top with the facing because then I'm going to have two seams right on top of each other and that doesn't really look that neat. For now the zipper is installed and I'm going to pretend it is until I get to the facing stages where I'm going to actually sew on this side of the right side of the body permanently. This side has already been sewn permanently, the one that was sandwiched between the two seams. So I'm just going to keep constructing this jacket, sewing the sh shoulder seams together, finishing this seam that I haven't done. I'm going to sew that and serge that. This is the other seam on the right side of the body that is just sewn normally. I have already serged it and I'm going to sew it with a one centimeter seam allowance or three eighths. On the other side of the body, on the left side, is that half of the zipper was sandwiched in between this same seam, only on the right side it's just a normal seam. Mm -hmm. 
I have a raw jacket on so you can see what I'm talking about, the zipper. So this is the right side of my body, my right hand. And this is where the zipper was sewn onto the center, as you can see there. This is the one I haven't done the definite stitch because there still needs to be a facing attached. And when that gets attached, the zipper will be like sandwiched between this fabric and the facing. So that's the reason I just did a basting stitch on the edge. On the other side, on the left, I have sewn this definitely, <laughs> the zipper. So the zipper is sandwiched between the lateral front and the center front. As you can see, the zipper's teeth stop there, but the seam keeps going all the way up to the shoulder. And these are gonna hang however you wanna close them, but I'm gonna have contrast black leather look jersey here on this side, so it's gonna look really cool. So, you know, there's gonna be a collar here, so you could wear this completely zipped up with you know the zipper on the side so it's not on the center or you can just unzip this partially and have this hang like this and like that that would be the traditional look the color still missing um i'm quite happy with the fit so far it's a neat jacket it's not supposed to be fitted i have sized down one to a 12 i should have done a 14 according to my measurements but looking at the ease and everything, I think this is fine. And the shoulder is going to be perfect too. So far, so good. So this is going to hit me at the high hip. That's where I wanted it. Had I left it at the original length, one and a half inches shorter, it would have been really short for me. And I'd rather have it a little bit longer. And yeah, that, this is my preferred length, at least for my height and my proportions. I have two collar pieces here, one from the main fabric and I've chosen this one to be the under collar and one from contrast leather looking jersey and that's going to be my upper collar to make the same contrast as the facings will. Now I have interfaced not like the instructions say, the instructions say that the under collar is the one that is interfaced and I have sewn a lot of jackets, a lot of jackets and I prefer the upper collar to be interfaced as per other jacket instructions as well i think it just looks smoother and and just hangs nicer that the visible part of the collar is the one interfaced and the under collar is the one that's not so for this jacket i haven't followed those instructions there are lots of notches here to match different notches on the neckline i'm going to be sewing these two collar pieces together right sides together starting there the point there all the way up the top there and then I'm going to be turning it right sides out and then attaching it to the jacket. This is sewn with a 3.8 seam allowance. This is the collar, I have sewn it, turned it around and pressed it. And I've got all the notch marks there on the under collar. I'm just going to look at them while I pin this to the neckline. But for now, I'm going to do top stitching on this side. This is the upper collar, so I'm going to sew with this facing up at a quarter of an inch. So that's how the collar is going to look with the top stitching right there, a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to put this away and now I'm going to assemble the facings. This is the facing piece for the back that I've done with the main fabric. It's a small piece. It's been interfaced with neat interfacing and attached at the shoulder seams. These two front facings are made out of leather look jersey, just the same as the upper collar and these go right sides together. So the shiny bit leather look to that one, right sides together and sew these tiny little seams on the top. Now these shoulder seams, I'm gonna press them open, finger press, and all this raw area here on the edge, I'm gonna finish with my serger. So all this bit there. And this other part is going to go attached to the neckline so that doesn't need to be finished. So I have the body of the jacket here semi-assembled. As you can see I've sewn the shoulder seams. They have been pressed towards the back. 
here is the center front here and there is a dot there that has to match the edge of the collar and I've matched that there and then along the neckline there's other dots that need to match like these ones from the neckline and they match the ones that are in there as you can see those two match those two and the collar matches perfectly so on this other side the dot there matches that one there and I have hand basted these together right on the edge just to keep them together because now I need to get my facing pieces and put them on top what I have here is the under collar touching the right side of the back right there and I have the upper collar on top now these are the facings that have already been attached at the shoulder seams and this facing right side of the facing to the upper collar right there these need to be matched all along and the shoulder seams here need to match and this is going to be one long seam because remember I've done a temporary basting stitch on this side of the zipper this is where I'm going to catch it now and sew it on definitely the facing and the jacket piece sandwiching the zipper there so I'm going to go ahead and hand baste all this I finished hand basting on the facings onto the jacket in between there is the collar and I have facings right sides of the facing to the right side of the fabric this is the right side where the zipper has to be sandwiched in between now with a definite stitch where I just sort of basted the zipper on but now it's going to be definite uh, at the bottom at the bottom the zipper stops right there if you can see the texture going through there and I'm going to start sewing around here I drew with a chalk a straight line of a hem I'm not going to do the whole thing I'm going to start around there and start there pivot then go all the way up the zipper up here zippers inside and here I'm going to pivot the zipper teeth are, uh, are there 3 eighths of an inch below the top there the seam allowance is 3 eighths so then I'm going to pivot there go across the neckline the collar I already hand basted it on the first bit there and now I've got another row of uh, hand basting and go across there there's the shoulder seams that match the jacket's shoulder seams right there across pivot here across here now this other center front doesn't have zipper in there so it's just two layers of fabric and that will go all the way down and the same here I've drawn with a chalk the straight line of the hem that's just basting it's not straight and I'm going to stop around there and then flip these right sides out I'm going to start at the bottom here this is a partial hem I'm sewing and then I'm going to pivot up this is the center that doesn't have a zipper in there and it's just two layers of fabric here the facing on top and the main fabric on the bottom now these are all curved seams so I'm always touching and feeling that I'm not going to get any puckers although everything has been hand basted I don't have to worry that much So I've sewn right through there and now to come back down on top of the zipper I change to my zipper presser foot and start from the top. So I can feel the zipper stop right there at the bottom and I'm going to stop there and then pivot and sew across just partially the hem. And I'm going to try and sew with this foot just that little bit there. Done. Now I need to cut away some excess from this area and then flip this right sides out. This is how much bulk I've cut away from the hem just on that area. Just a good two inches from the center there. And I've done that on both sides. Now I just have to flip this. And I'll have the zipper end right there on this side 
on this other center I won't have a zipper in so I'm just gonna fold this and turn it so that's how the other bottom will look without a zipper there this is the neckline that I've snipped everywhere in order to turn the curves because it is a curved seam and I'm just gonna flip this right sides out still a very raw looking jacket I've turned the facings right sides out you can see one of these tips is just the main fabric and the facing and the other one has a zipper in there still needs to be tidied up and pressed and top stitched but all that main area is done now I have pinned side seams right there I'm gonna sew those serge them and I'll be attaching the sleeves on the traditional way the pattern has you do it extended on the flat um, I'd rather just do it the traditional way but that's just personal preference after putting on the sleeves and tidying all this up comes a lot of top stitching and the hem I'll be doing the hem by hand here is my butterfly moto jacket I know moto jackets are supposed to be more rough looking and I've got a mix of that because I think the butterfly print is really feminine <laughs> but then I chose this leather look jersey to contrast on the lapels here on the facings and on the collar and I think that gives it like the more the moto look you know that you would expect and look I didn't have to do these cuffs here on the bottom <laughs> I mentioned that I was going to do these little cuffs in the same contrast fabric the reason I did them not was not because I wanted to or I thought they would look cool but because I had 65 centimeters left of the butterfly fabric 65 centimeters I believe is about 26 inches of length and that is just enough for me to make a pencil skirt and I prefer to have a pencil skirt out of the butterfly print than just chop off a bunch to make the sleeves longer and then have a piece that's not good for anything. So expect to see a pencil skirt in the butterfly print. And I lengthened the sleeve with a cuff. I think it looks cool, you know, just a little hack, nothing special there. And you saw how I've done the top stitching for the collar. Now I did the top stitching on the jacket itself different than what the pattern recommended. Basically, this seam that comes from the shoulder all the way down is suggested to be top stitched at a quarter of an inch while catching the facing inside. I don't like doing that. I think it's really bulky and it's just not my preference to have bulky stitches, like to have my machine going through a lot of layers. I don't think the machine copes that well. So I just top stitched my seam as per usual while the facing was flapping around, you know. And I've done that on both sides and then what I've done here inside is hand sew the edge of the facing to the seam that there is there all the way down and then the hem has been hand sewn I like hand sewing my hems I like the look of the fabric just really clean at the bottom without any stitching so hand hand hemming I would never doubt that I don't even it doesn't even cross my mind to think oh no I don't want hand hem I always want hand hem you know and what I did sew down by machine was this facing here at the back so this little curved area there is sewn by machine I'm sure you're not gonna see it but right there there is a little curved seam there um, if you ever try hand basting a seam and then just whizzing past with the machine it's so nice because you know you've already done the work to get that seam really precise and all you have to do is, is stitch it on really well you know pins they don't catch every bit of the of the curves there you have fabric shifting around and of course hand basting is always a personal preference it is my preference I've been doing it for years and it's one of the things I don't question and I just do it so if you haven't tried hand basting give it a go you might hate it at first but in the end run you'll find out that you're spending less time with your seam ripper mainly <laughs> When the zipper is closed it's a bit more fitted but still it's not a fitted jacket it's not tight at all there's still some positive ease around the waist everywhere and i've got a layer underneath 
it would be looser if you made the correct size but this is the ease i prefer i love it up closer you can see the jacket hits at the high hip had i not lengthened the two inches this would be like so short like it would be there it's not a good look for me i don't ever think it's flattering for my proportions and my height so this is just right for me and my height open it it's more relaxed you know here you can see the collar more up close up the top there it, re it hangs really nice this facing is the one that's been interfaced you know as per the instructions I interface the upper collar, I think it looks better than having the under collar um, interfaced and you'll find most jacket patterns recommend you interface the upper collar not the under collar. I'm not sure why this pattern doesn't do that but you know when you learn something that you like and you think it makes sense you can easily change it you know to suit what you think is best and that's what I do constantly in my sewing you know. If this is zipped up it looks like that. Now there is an option. To put some snaps right there where you can zip up to the top and, and snap that and then that's how that's going to look with the collar there it's not my preference to close up something up to the top i don't think i need it for warmth in my weather quite the opposite so i didn't put the snaps there although they look nice i just didn't put them on i really hope you enjoyed this video go and check out Kim's video on her channel Dorothy's daughter and see her amazing jacket and everything she's discussing about sewing with faux leather I've had mixed experiences with faux leather so I'm interested myself to go and learn all about that over on her channel thank you so much for watching please share like comment subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow with another video bye and have fun sewing what can I